Hi, I'm Captain Larry Bell with Texas Fishing Tips, and this is your weekly fishing report. Sundown Bay, all the way up in here, back shoreline, talked about it before. Great area. You know, the tides have been running up and down. We've had some good areas. You know, we've, we're on the uh, back side of the new moon as we head into this, this upcoming week. So the one thing that you want to, you know, make sure of, that's, those are going to be your wild card days. So make sure you have a little bit of everything in your box, you know, bigger profile size, smaller profile size, uh, suspended baits, topwater baits, uh, any, of, any of the above. Try, try a little bit of everything if you don't find a consistent bite on a particular thing. So just uh, continue to work all that, all this back area on this back shoreline. you got three little back lake mouths that go way back up in there. You can work those mouths. you got shell that work on both sides of those things. The little island that's across the way on the southern end of sundown uh, against the inside shoreline has been really good for redfish, scattered trout, occasional flounder. Have not come across any black drum in here. Again, black drum on an on a artificial is tough in and of itself, but it is possible. Uh, the one thing that, I, and I've mentioned this in the past, the one thing that that, uh, that you can catch the black drum on with an artificial is the Little John because it's got the scent in it, it's infused, and then you've got uh, certain colors and it's got a really good darting action that just entices that bite. So anyway, it works for all of the above, redfish, trout, flounder, uh, black drum. This is one of the areas that uh, is holding all four species in here occasionally on uh, any particular day. You may catch one or more of the other thing, one species, more redfish, more trout, a few flounder mixed in here or there, and again, occasional black drum. Uh, the main thing we've been throwing in here has been, again, the burner shads and the twisted tea, uh, the supernatural white ice, and then in the original size, uh, the twisted tea, white ice has been really good. Uh, watermelon red in the original has been good. A uh, little bit of chartreuse because this gets dirtied up in here when you get the wind blowing, pumping pretty good, so it can get dirty on you. So you want to have something that'll kind of stand out. But working these back shorelines, uh, tremendous amount of bait working in and out of these areas. You know our majors and minors have been pretty good for the most part. Uh, those bites are different every day. Uh, we've noticed that some of them have lasted maybe. 25 to 35 minutes on one particular day. The next day it may last 45 minutes to an hour. So always something to consider when you're incorporating your major and minor into your day is that you want to make sure that you're in an area that you can uh, utilize that bite frame. So always try to be, if you got a target area that you want to fish, providing you've got bait working in there, you got some good structure, hopefully you got some tidal movement, either wind driven or tidal driven going on that, uh, that you can set yourself up in there, you know, 30 to 45 minutes before that bite frame happens, because you never know, because it may kick in early, it may kick in late, but but spend whatever you do, spend the whole bite frame in that particular area, so you can utilize and get the most production out of that particular bite frame, whatever it may be, either the major or the minor. Uh, again, work all this area up in here against the back side of the little island on the front side of the line. Of course, if you're on the front side, you're going to be in the ICW, so it might not be as easy. Uh, unless you're going to fish it from the boat and use your trolling motor there and kind of work down the edge of it. Uh, back in here, there's a little cut through that comes all the way through. You can get your boat in that. There's some shell pads around there, so be aware of those. Probably be a good idea if you had the right amount of tide water that you wouldn't have to worry about it too much to float your boat over the top of it. If you've got a skinny water boat, it's not a big deal. And you've got back lakes that are all that come off of this little mouth that's back in here. There's been scattered redfish that are in here. Ever so often, if the conditions warrant themselves and, and presents itself, you can find you a couple of tailing redfish. You can throw that, uh, one thing that's been good with that is throw that burner, burner shad in that uh, uh, chicken of the sea flavor or the uh, super now, depending on the, uh, what the color of the water is. Just throw that out there and just kind of work that back to them and get that reactionary strike from them. It's a lot of fun to be able to do that. And if you've got a top water bait, tie that thing on and work it across these back lake mouths in here. Wait up in there if you if you so choose. It's pretty soft. I'd suggest staying in the boat unless you're really experienced at, is, in being in some super soft stuff. Uh, but that said, you do have some opportunities. There are some uh, opportunities that will present themselves to you in some of these back lakes in here. Uh, the little back lake cut that comes all the way through then dumps back out to the ICW. You can approach that from the ICW side and fish that at the mouth of that. 
see a lot of bait guys that'll just anchor up in that and just throw baits in there. You can do the same thing with your artificial. You can just roll your trolling motor up there and just work the inside of this mouth, work down that little cut back into sundown in that whole area up and down there. Work all that area as much as possible. You'll find redfish that are cruising up and down on the back shoreline on the back side of the little island there next to the ICW. There's, there's redfish that cruise up and down that. So uh, again, look for your bait, incorporate your major and minor. Use the right proper size profile bait. Just kind of, like I say, use different ones. Just see what you got and see what they're really like and pay attention to that. The fish will dictate to you what they want. From Jaybird all the way down into Spalding. All the little back lakes that are here, the back lake mouths that are here, these are all areas that you need, really need to explore. Uh, scattered redfish will get in these. And some days you can, you can get in there and you can find you a nice little small school that may be anywhere from 8 to 15. You, and of course, there's always a single that's running around in there somewhere. One of the things I really like to do, especially in those those bigger back lakes, is get a top water bait. Depending on what the water clarity is, I'm usually I always use something that's either got a gray, silver, or white belly because that's what all your uh, bait fish bellies look like to to your predator fish. Most of them are attacking them from underneath and from behind, so that's what they see color wise. So make sure that you're throwing something that's got that particular flavor on there. Work the shoreline edges. Uh, pay attention to what your water levels are that are in these back lakes, man, because you get in some of these areas, if you're getting in that super skinny stuff that's less than calf deep, it's going to be a little difficult, especially with the amount of grass that's grown. The grass has gotten really tall in there, so you need a little bit more uh, water to get in there so you can work your top water bait in there. Unless you're going to single hooks, then that helps a little bit from the weedless aspect of it. Uh, if you don't want to do that and it's a little bit more difficult than you want to deal with, and then you're probably going to want to rig up you a weedless setup with your uh, plastics, whatever you're going to throw. Uh, the double Ds and all that kind of stuff are great in here, but that grass really has to be short. Like the winter time, it's a good time during that, you know, like late October, November, sometime in there, that grass has died off or has dropped down closer to the bottom, so you don't have as much impediments there for you. So what you want to be able to do, once this grass is nice and healthy like it is in a lot of these back lakes, it's really tall. So rig it up weedless, whether it's 16th ounce, 8th ounce. I wouldn't throw anything more than an 8th ounce because you're going to have to deal with being down in the grass. Even though it's weedless, you're still going to have to deal with it a lot. Uh, but that said, get back in here. Work those back lakes. Look for your bait where it's at. Look for the little drops, potholes, all those areas there up and down the shoreline. Uh, push further back if you so choose. All of it's weightable. Some of it's a little softer than others, but you, you can all manage it pretty well. Just a matter of how much you want to walk and how much you want to do. Uh, down here in Spalding, you got all these back lake mouths that are in here. There's been some uh, scattered redfish that have been cruising both the inside mouth and the outside mouths of these back in the back lake some. You just have to get back there and explore and see what you see. Lots of bait that's stacked up in the back of these things. They're a lot of fun to get back there again. Again, with the top water baits back in these, lots of fun to get that and get that top water action going back there in those lakes. Love for that to happen. Uh, again, rig it up weedless for your plastics if you can't if you can't control the uh, regular plastic jig head to get down in the grass, but this is something you just have to see. Pay attention to your tides in these areas here, what the water flow is doing, how, how high it is. Uh, 361 Fishing App is a great app that you can use that can access that type of information. It's all in one place at one time. It's one that I use primarily every day. So pass that along to you if you're interested in something like that. Uh, work down here toward the Fingers of Carlos on the shoreline off this point, this little cove that comes back around there. Uh, there's been, uh, you catch a scattered redfish in there every so often. The trout, you know, we're catching lots of trout, lots of, you know, for the new the new slot, which is 17 to 23, man, we are catching a ton that are in that 14 to 16 range, 16 and a half range, which are a lot of fun. On artificial, we're doing a pretty good job of not killing these fish. So if you're going to throw artificial, which I hope you are a lot of, you can avoid that so those fish can go back in the water unharmed because most of those hookups are going to be in the lip and inside jaw. They're not going to be swallowed and get down in their gut where those fish are ultimately going to die because of that. Something to keep in mind when you're fishing for these fish. Uh, there are the scattered ones that are in that slot. You know, you find some 17 and a half, you'll find some 18, especially when you get up here in the fingers of Carlos and all that. Water temps are starting to be in the mid 80s, starting to push up to the upper 80s. We're going to start probably going to have us winter, or uh, excuse me, summertime is upon us. Temperatures are get, beginning to start to rise and starting to be in those mid to upper 90s, so it's going to really push the water temps up. So areas like the shale, 
fish are showing up on the shell bars, shell reefs, the guts, the cuts, all those areas are areas that you really need to start looking at, look for these fish, these trout. Scattered redfish or two ever so often. Uh, the Carlos little fingers here, you'll find a scattered flounder ever so often. You're dragging that bottom, you'll, you'll come across one. Uh, all these areas in here are really starting to show up a lot of trout in these things. So just be aware of that. Again, majors and minors, always a big deal. Look for your bait work in these areas. Throw your darker baits in here because this area can get really blown out when the wind starts to howl. You know, the last few days we've been in pretty good shape with that. But then again, we've had other days where it starts to jump back up in the low 20s to mid 20s. So it, it changes things pretty quick. So you must be able to adjust on the fly as far as your color selection. Again, with you got that dirty water, some, some, char, some chartreuse, some white on the tail, or even a little bit of orange on there. There's a bunch of different baits out that, that have that. Uh, the down south fire tiger is the one with the orange on it. And then, of course, there's a bunch of baits with chartreuse. Uh, all this area in here. Uh, Again, the uh, chicken of the sea, magic grass, the darker baits when that water starts to get dark for you in that. Uh, look for all these areas. Look for that particular type of bait. You know, profile size is always a big deal, so make sure that you pay attention to what the fish are wanting. Oh, one of my favorite areas down here in Copano, Swan Lake Shoreline. This whole thing here, man. I love this area. Love to get down in here and work these guts. Get down in here and work the shoreline, especially now. You know, you got the grass line edges out there. You're on that drop. When you got the proper wind, which is predominantly we have a south southeast breeze all the time. Here recently, we've kind of had crazy winds everywhere, so it's just one thing you have to kind of contend with. But when you have the proper wind, which is south southeast, this Swan Lake shoreline is one of the best ones to really work here in Copano. You can really set yourself up and have some tremendous mornings, late afternoons. We've caught really good fish. We've caught black, a lot of black drum off this thing. We've caught a tremendous amount of trout. Again, we're catching a lot of trout off this edge you know the grass island and the whole point all this here in port bay off this edge out here the little cut through where the gas well is and then of course this of course is flat right here with the drop off that comes all the way back around all the way down to that point all this area here again the water temps start to get a little warmer early mornings you know you're going to be up close tight to the shoreline especially depending on what the tides are going to be doing for you, you know they're always important that you pay attention to those because it kind of dictates to you where you can go, what you want to do, how you want to fish, you know, based on what that tide is doing, you should have four or five locations already mapped out in your head based on what that tide level is doing. So if you know one area, if you're really uh, familiar with it and how it sets up for you based on the wind and the tides and what, what your current's going to be, then you can sit there and you can really work that area and be very productive in that area. Uh, as that warm, as the day starts to warm up and the water start, water temps start to come up, you start working out here on the edge of that Swan Lake flat that's there. This looking town toward Italian Bend that you can look straight across and see Italian Bend where the shrimp farm and all that stuff is back behind you. If you're working this edge here, uh, you can find fish that are up and down this. They'll drop off that edge in that probably that four to five foot range. You may want to uh, increase your bait size and profile just a little bit to either an original, maybe even a supermodel if you're throwing a down south. Uh, I'll tell you another thing too is the uh, soft dine is really good for working these drops and these edges in the, like this. When you know you got four to six foot of water, you can throw that soft dine and just kind of let that thing flutter down into that deeper water and it helps you locate fish and you'll catch a lot of fish too. Great little rattle. You know, I like to throw the one that's the mullet flavor. It's got a black back with a silver sides and underneath. So it really mimics what a little finger mullet looks like. And it's got little rattles built into it and the big old eyeballs just sitting there looking at you. So fish really, uh, they take to it really good, especially if you're working that bait really well off those edges. Something to consider. If you don't have that in a box, something that you may want to put in your box. Another thing, too, is with the amount of shrimp that's in the bay system right now that they're out there shrimping, you want to turn to your uh, Marker 54 Jerk Shrimp. Uh, that's... It's done really well for us as well. Free lining that thing off the edges, deeper water, up in the grass beds. They have a, they have a weedless setup as well. If you don't, if you're not able to control that through the grass and stuff, put that weedless marker 50 on and just jump that thing around in there. Redfish like it, trout like it, flounder love it. So just one thing that you might want to take in consideration uh, is pick you up one of those to keep in your box as well. Working all these edges, uh, looking for your bait. Again, I can't express to you. How, how important the majors and minors are and having yourself set up in particular areas whenever those bite, that bite frames are getting ready to uh, kick off 
either before, during, or after. You just want to be in an area where you can you can take advantage of that. Look for your bait. Uh, work all these areas. The darker baits for us has been really productive. You know, again, the twisted tea has been pretty pretty productive for the most part. Going on now for probably four to five weeks in any just about any type of color. But we've come across some really clear water here. In the last few days, we've had some uh, really calm conditions, which has been kind of new over the past few weeks with the amount of wind that we've had. So that water's really gotten clear. And uh, so you want to look for your uh, either the, like the dirty tequilas, blue moons in the down south, the little john, uh, golden red glitter, uh, kitchen sink, which is gray or excuse me, gold, white, and black. But they're all translucent baits, and they become very, very uh, productive in those particular areas you get lots of reactionary strikes so uh, just multiple things that you can put into your box and be ready for because when you're into the transition days as we're heading toward uh, full moon here in the next probably 10 to 15 days is something that you're going to have just those wild card days so you're going to have all different kinds of things so again work these areas really well be productive with it be patient with it and you'll locate fish thanks for watching i'm captain larry bell